It's me, your friend, your only friend, your best friend. Not in that order. I got a little out of order. It's me, your friend, your best friend, your only friend. Talking to you once again from beaming Portland, Oregon in the greater Northwest. My name is John Bennett, your host for today's program. I got to tell you what I did this morning. It was hilarious. I was laying in bed on, this is a Sunday, listening to the radio. There's this uh, show that I wanted to listen to. So I tuned in early, you know, to get a, to get a front row seat and uh, tune in. And, and uh, they were talking about some of the news talks, radio, K, KXL 750 AM on your radio dial in Portland, Oregon. And every Sunday morning from 8 to 10, they have a discussion program. News, this is a news talk radio station, which means that it's solid, solid. White, angry, male, bigoted, hate speech, hating, liberal hating, socialism bashing, socialism annihilating. <laughs> Old white capitalistic round table type guys, you know. And that's it. That's it for talk radio. And I, I presume it's this is worldwide, if not nationwide. It's just nothing but, but the perspective of angry old white males who believe that you know capitalism is 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 the only way to go. Well, you know, that's great. Good for them. You know, admire your entrepreneuring, adventuresome spirit, you know, and wanting to go out and make a difference in the world and be a success. But it's just kind of weird that the, um, that the entire spectrum of, of news talk radio a, on the public airways, AM a. mostly, some FM, I presume, but a AM is hasn't got the chops for music, so it lends itself to a discussion, to the human voice, to, the, to talking. So you, we've ended up with a lot of sports talk in this late year of 2018, and um, it's very politically one-sided. It's all, you know, basically from the right wing point of view. And uh, even in Portland, Oregon, which is a liberal town, very, pretty liberal, uh, one of the most liberal places probably in the world, who knows? Of course, it couldn't be any more liberal than, than Marin County. Marin County is gloriously liberal. But anyway, the news talk radio is gloriously bigoted right-wing, white man, Republican. <laughs> and this one program that they do from 8 to 10 on KXL 750 on Sunday mornings is the only program that has a Democrat on it or has had a Democrat on it. There's two guys right now, it started out as another as a Democrat and another Republican, but it's supposed to be a cage fight. It's how they used to build it. It's a cage fight between a Republican and a Democrat. One goes in, one comes out, or two go in, one come out. Oh, no, one goes in, two come out. <laughs> yeah, like a pregnant woman, you know. One goes in, two come out. Mm. I'm drinking some green tea with a little blueberry syrup in it, and it tastes kind of weird. But I think, maybe I could trick my body into thinking that it's drinking algae blue green algae here have some blue green algae it tastes great and i'm not I like the blueberries are fighting the green tea the green tea that's what we need is a, the green show a show about the green you know what i mean one one um socialist pot smoke one pot smoking socialist do be doing the socialist versus a whole room full of Republicans, and this would be the this would be the political discussion of the week, the Green Show. Yeah, 
the uh, the leader of the gang could could be this pot smoking socialist who reads from Karl Marx, you know, pushing socialism on everybody. Yeah, telling the you know you shut up, shut the fuck up, you, you sleazy motherfucker, sit down and shut up. I don't care if you're the head of Apple. And, you know, I don't, I don't care if you got shares invested in Amazon. You know, shut up and sit down. You got nothing to say. Yeah, that'd be kind of a turnaround, wouldn't it? So anyway, this this show, <laughs> the guy that plays the, the Democrat has been out of town for a couple of weeks. You know, on some junket back east. He's, I think he's has, he's a kind of. A, Big shot in the Republic in the um, Democratic Party here in Oregon, Mark Abrams, and uh, he pretty much has been running this cage fight, liberal cage fight, liberal conservative cage fight for years, I guess. And every Sunday morning from eight to ten, so he's out of town this week, and instead the, his co-host Jim Pacero, who's a the Republican of this supposed cage fight. Is in charge of the show, and instead of having another Democrat come in, this guy Abrams invites in, you know, half a dozen Republicans. They got a room full of Republicans on a talk show where they're not even soliciting to take phone calls. Usually, they take phone calls. You know, give us a call, four one five seven five seven five. Now we'll take your call and, and tell us what you think. They don't do any of that. They just basically say, "Call up, and you know, we're going to lop, going to bash over the head with a shovel." So he's not doing that. He's not even calling for phone calls. He's just talking to these Republican guys. Capitalism roundtable. <laughs> how great capitalism is and how shitty socialism is. And now it's the Democrats. You know, it's always the Democrats fault for everything that's going on. Where's the other? Where's the other perspective? Where's the other side of this discussion? And this 100 percent use of the public airways to push a political one political perspective that is bashing the other side constantly, running them down. It's all their fault. You know, they can't get anybody to work for me. If, is it too high? The minimum wage is too high. <laughs> and I can't get anybody to work for me for $24 an hour. <laughs> well, uh, I hate socialism. Socialism is destroying us. All the socialists should be assassinated. <laughs> Mexican borders being overrun down there by immigrants. Yeah, they're immigrants that'll work for five dollars an hour, you idiot. You know, he can't find the people to do his work for him for him at twenty-four dollars an hour, which is forty-eight thousand dollars a year. How do you how is it he supposed to live a normal life in Portland, Oregon on forty-eight thousand dollars a year? I mean that used to be a lot of money, right? Now it's nothing, man. I mean Rent, if you got $1,500 in rent, $48,000 is going to add up. What is that in rent? $1,500, that's um, quick, John, $1,800 a, a month that's left, right? If you got a $1,500 rent check and you're, make, and you're making $48,000, that's uh, – I'm starting to panic. That's four thousand a month. Fifteen hundred of that goes to. Uh, that's before taxes. So you've got taxes on top of that. You've got overhead like insurance. You know, rent, food, gas for your car, a car, insurance, more insurance, and then there's your health costs. If you made the mistake of calling a emergency number and saying you, that you need to go to the hospital and you don't have an insurance, you're going to get smacked with like a $4,000 bill on that. So if you have any medical problems, you're fucked. You're totally fucked, man. You, it's like you're headed for bankruptcy. And a big mark on your, on your credit record. That's a $24 an hour. But this guy is crying that he can't get people to work for him for $24 an hour in Portland, Oregon. 
gosh, ain't that too bad. I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, I really feel your pain. How much is he making? You know, what it would, what would really be interesting to see, and I think that Trump is pragmatic enough to do this. If there's anybody that would do this, it would be Trump. Not to say that, you know, I've always been very critical of him. But lately, he's beginning to show some pragmatism, I think, or I'm beginning to see it, what looks at, at things as being pragmatic. And I should know, I'm actually very learned in this area of thought. I'm the guy that pretty much started conservative talk radio in Portland, Oregon, on KKY 1150 AM on your radio dial, dial 222 KKY open line for the Jack Hammer radio talk show. And on this radio, in this radio talk show, I played a talk show, a, a conservative Republican kind of talk show host. And I would bash every caller that practiced would come in. I'd hang up on them for no reason at all. I'd pick fights. And it became immensely popular in Portland, Oregon. And I, liked, was, I think I was only for only about an hour once a week. And I had a blast doing that show. It was hilarious. But, and this was at a time when most of the liberal talk radio, most of the talk radio was liberal. It, all of it was. I mean, it was just the opposite it is now. And it wasn't very much of it. I mean, this one radio station, KKY, was pretty much it for Portland, Oregon. But it was solid talk. And the moderators there would be on for usually three hours a day. And it was pretty boring. I mean, these guys had real deadpan looks on their faces. There's one lady, um, Pierce. Mrs. Pierce, oh, her name, her first name will come to me in a minute. Somebody out there will know what I'm talking about. Somebody who was here in the, back in the 80s in Portland, Oregon. And all these guys were ba basically pretty liberal. There was even a communist that would call in on a regular basis. And it turned out that this communist was paying off um, the talk show hosts at KKY. And I know because he paid me off. Give me 20 bucks at lunch one day. I wanted to meet him because I've lived in a communist country. And I've got to, so I have a, per, a perspective on that, what it's like to live under communism. And uh, it's not, you know, it's not as bad as they'd have you believe. No crime. You know, you, people could talk to each other. Kind of like we're all on the same page as far as the politics go and how we feel about capitalism. Uh but we, you know, we can talk and, you know, we have to kind of be careful about what we say about that. But other than that, when it comes to checkers and cheese, you know, it's, it's, everybody's pretty comfortable with one another. They call each other comrade, right? They're not going into the poorhouse when they get sick. You know, they have decent jobs. I mean, I guess, decent decent ideals. Everybody in, in it together. So anyway, I have kind of a perspective on this. And uh, at that time, you know, I was, I was just as capitalistic as everybody else. Just having fun. But things have changed. And the Republican Party needs to get out ahead of it of this thing that's happening here. Socialism is, is inevitable for a, 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 um, a culture or a society like the United States or the world. It's basically, it's, it's a worldview. And it's based on equality, whereas the other side is based on freedom. They want to be, they want to be free to do whatever they want with their money. So money rules, and that's the standard. In socialism, there's basically a rule of law that says there's, you know, some things that you can do, and some things that you can't, that you shouldn't do, and that's just basically civilized behavior. You notice that in the most liberal or the most socialistic parts of the United States are the cities and the left, the West Coast and the East Coast, Northern East Coast. 
kind of, you know, with a little vacuum in between the uh, New England and, and Florida. Tends to be pretty liberal. But that's changing. There's basically, you have nowhere else to go but socialism. So the Republican Party needs to get out ahead of this. And what's really fascinating to me is I think the, the one guy that could pull it off is Donald Trump. If Donald Trump started talking about health care for everybody, like they have in the socialist countries of Europe and you know, all the other developed companies, countries, and setting our goal to be the number one health, number one country for health in the world instead of what is it, 26th? I mean, let's make America great again, right? <laughs> Donald Trump is the head of the Communist Party. <laughs> People love narcissists, and he's a narcissist, and they love them despite the fact that it's, I'm not the guy that said this. This is, the guy that wrote the book on narcissism. That narcissists are loved just as much in communist countries as they are in capitalist countries. And he's the really first good narcissist that we've had come along. He's more than just an egomaniac. He's a megalomaniac. Megalomaniac. And he's shown himself to have, to have a, a wide repertoire of, um, well, not of emotion. He's cruel, you know, that cruel mouth of his. But he has a wide rep, reputation, repertory of um, dealing with people. I mean, he's very, I'm beginning to think, I mean, you may not like hearing me say this, but I'm beginning to believe that he's very pragmatic at a certain ideal, which is basically money, right? In other words, it's good, which is Don, which is what's good for Don is good for the world. But that has a reverse thing too. What's good for the world is, is good for Don. See, because he knows he's pragmatic enough to know that he has to go with the flow and get out ahead of it. You know, find the wave and surf it, right? You get out ahead of it a little bit. Otherwise you get engulfed by it. That's how you surf, right? There has to be some opposi opposition coming up towards you, but gravity has got to be on your side in order to plow ahead of the wave. And so he's the kind of guy that, you know, without an, any allegiance to a political ideal, he could turn around and, and, as a populist, which he has been, be there for everybody. The problem with this is that he has to define who we are as opposed to something. In other words, there's, uh, there's Americans and there's the rest of the world. And that's probably a thing that he's not going to get over. He's not going to get that over. I don't know if he can reach that ideal. The only thing that would really bring the world together is Clyde Lewis, who is another um, talker on KXL. It has the cage, the liberal Democrat, the liberal Republican cage fight. Clyde is a paranormal talk show host. He talks about, you know, flying saucers and Bigfoot. And, and Clyde's an ama really a fascinating character because he doesn't run really an interview show. He runs the Clyde Lewis show called Ground Zero. And it plays all night long. And this, as, as far as long form radio goes, you know, what, four or five hours, he goes for from seven o'clock to 12 o'clock. That's a five hour live TV call in TV radio, not TV, radio call in show, five hours long. I mean, that's unheard of. And he's syndicated. He's out of, right out of Portland, Oregon here. And, um, Clyde, um, I'll get back to Clyde, but anyway, as far as Trump goes, Trump could actually lead, lead the parade, get in there and say, you know, it's time that, that, that you get free health care. You're an American, you've, you've earned it, your forefathers have earned it for you, that you'll be taken care of. 
So that's the problem. There's anxi high anxiety going on around here because they, they don't have anybody like Wood, like they say Woodrow Wilson, like Franklin Roosevelt to tell them that, that there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to fear, but you have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Remember that? Well, how come, how come nobody's telling us that? Where's, that, where's somebody telling us that instead of what we're getting is this very device, divisive kind of rhetoric, conversations going on among people that should be the adults in the room, like these guys on this radio talk show. Why not do a talk show called The Green Show, led by a pot-smoking communist, versus all the, lib all the uh, conservatives in the world? Just as a change of pace. I mean, it's like, come on, you guys, you've got to be kidding me. This guy Lars Larson on KXL is just another another example of this. He says, well, naysayers go to the head of the line, which means he's inviting liberals to call this show. He's a white, ang angry white male, bigoted conservative talk show on KXL 750 AM and on your radio dial in, in Portland, Oregon. Give us a call and, you know, I'll put you on for it. Glad you called in. You know, what it is. And then he just hammers it. Whoever it is that, you know, it's calling as a name, and they share. He's the guy with the thumb on the button and you say something he doesn't like. He pushes the button. He called me, I called him up once and he called me a liar because I was complaining about the uh, Cigar Dave, who's another talk show host, syndicated on KXL, who, um, was uh, talking about David Hogg, the the, uh, the high school shooting um, what do I call him? What, what was it? He's, he's basically kind of leading the one of the leaders of that campaign to do something about all these mass shootings. You know what I'm talking about. Not Columbine, but that other high school. And Hog tend to outrage people like talk radio, <laughs> talk show hosts. And uh, because, you know, this is a threat to our Second Amendment rights. Well, your Second Amendment rights are basically nothing more than hands off by the federal government, right? You know, if you want a carry permit, you don't go to the federal government. You go to your local sheriff, usually, to get your carry permit. That's who gives you the right or infringe, can infringe on your right to bear arms is the sheriff. You know, the, the, law, the state law enforcement authorities, they're the ones that can take your gun away from you. And they do all the time. I mean, it's like, did somebody miss that? If you read the, the Second Amendment, the Second Amendment is basically for the, the provision for a state militia. Which means that the state, the militia, the militia, the militant issues of uh, of government be handled on the state level, and to be a member of the to be a member of the union, a state has to have a republican constitution, which you know provides for things like no bills of attainder, right? Yeah, they can't issue a. a a law against a single, against a particular person, but they're doing it anyway, especially in domestic abuse cases, which reminds me, one, my Thanksgiving, which was what, two nights ago, should have been a time when I'm thanking everybody for what they're doing. Instead, I end up talking to the police. Police came over on domestic abuse charges <laughs> without going into the gritty details I was accused of assaulting a woman. <laughs> I don't know whether I should take, go, go into the, the wherewithal, but anyway, they walked away from it as usual. I mean, the police are always coming over my house for one thing or another. It's like I tracked it like, like a magnet or something. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think, how, count how many times a woman has called the police on me. And not for necessarily, not for physical abuse. It's just that, well, I just don't seem to get along very well with women, I guess. Especially when they're tapping me out. 
you either give me your credit card or I'm calling the police and tell them that you socked me <laughs> in the eye. It's like, go ahead, give him a call. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to anybody. See, that's the thing is that right now the public discussion is very limited. You can't call these talk radio shows and have a discussion with somebody. They're, and they're not really having a discussion. They're, they're just making their making their chops off of uh, off of basically combative language. You know, get, get, getting a big argument going because that, that always attracts a fight. But I think you can do it if you flip it around. In other words, the wave is coming, so so make it make it the other way around. Start talking about what's wrong with capitalism, hypercapitalism. I mean, it's, it really drives people apart, and people are going nuts. The anxiety levels of being able to make it, make enough money, is going through the roof. Especially with these natural disasters, what happened in Marion County, not Mar not Marion, is it Marion County? Anyway, northern, north of San Francisco there was it. unreal. The number of people that are getting burned out, it's like, geez, I think I got problems. I think that, my house didn't just burn to the ground. And all of my neighbors get turned to ashes. Wow. And then there's stuff going on down at the border. Thousands of people trying to get in the United States. Let us in. Let us in, please. Help me. Help me. Now get out of here. Go on. Get off the lawn. Wow. Wow. Talk about spreading fear. Come on, Don. Get it together. If anybody can do it, Don Trump can do it. Don Trump could stand up and say, okay, here's the here's the new running rules. We're going to the, gonna handle this like an executive. Take care of these people. That's what we're here for. But I'm afraid it ain't going to happen. I'm just worried it's not going to happen. You know, speaking of, of Donald Trump and getting things happening, Donald Trump is an ex-vaxxer. I mean, not an ex-vaxxer, an um, anti-vaxxer. Did you know that? Trump is calling out the vaccine stuff, and that's right on. Trump is also challenging market, um, challenging, what am I trying to say, climate change. Anthropomorphic, anthropogenic climate change, man-made climate change, which should be challenged. I don't hear anybody, for example, talking about the carbon, how much carbon in the, in the atmosphere is actually, what percentage of it actually is made by man. If you look at the, if you go on, on Google and go to the periodic table or or just type in what what's the level of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, ask, ask Google. You just do it on your phone right now. Probably ought to do it. Just to give you an example. The answer comes back, it's minuscule. It's, it's like a percentage, 1%. So of that one minuscule percentage of the atmosphere that's carbon dioxide, how much of it is man-made? That's a fraction too. So it's a fraction of a fraction. <laughs> now, maybe that's enough to change it, but I don't think so, especially in the light of cyclic climate change. This isn't the first time that we've had a cold drought. It's not the first time that we've had a civil war concurrent with it every 80 years. A war or a civil war, an international war or a civil war every 80 years. And ours is up now. It's a, We're headed in that direction. It's a cycle. It seems to be associated with sunspots and, and get this, the uh, transit of Uranus. Yeah, that too. The uh, so the Uranian cycle is 84 years. So what I'm trying to say is that we tend to, the left tend to do this, I think, more than the right, tend to put the onus on on uh, man, that man did this. This is man's fault. I don't think it is. I mean, I could be wrong on that. I'm willing to be proven wrong, but I want to see this, show me the science. Show me the, you know, there's no way all the scientists agree. I don't know. I, I've dealt with these scientists for years now on the, uh, on the subject of homeopathy. And these motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. They haven't studied it. They haven't studied the literature. They talk like they do and they sometimes 
pretend to quote it, but every time I, I check it out, they're wrong. You know, classic being in the bashing of the homeopathy, quoting the, the Lynn meta-analysis, which showed that homeopathy isn't good for any particular thing. But that's not what they were looking for. What they were, the question they were trying to answer was, is homeopathy, is the homeopathic remedy a placebo? And they came, came to the conclusion that it's not. But you never hear these skeptics quote that. Instead, they say, well, homeopathy doesn't work. It's a placebo. And then they quote the Lynn study that says it's not. But they don't say that. Well, you only find that out by looking it up. They don't, they don't link out in their diatribes to anything to support it. And I'm seeing the same thing in, in climate change. I'm not hearing where this is linked to. Give me the numbers. Give me the science. The science that you say is, is I mean, it infuriates me. These guys pretend to be on the side of science. Oh, we've got hundreds of science. Yeah, I've heard that too on homeopathy. Oh, yeah, no, nobody agrees with it. There's six Nobel Prize awards that have been given to Nobel Prize recipients who support homeopathy have either done direct experiments on it or have supported it in theory. Josephson, for example, the physicist, Nobel physicist supports homeopathy. I should know. I spent an afternoon with him. I lectured at his symposium. And uh, been a tremendous supporter of homeopathy just by not bashing it. <laughs> but he's had some theory to go with it. None of it that I think is currently what it should be. But, I mean, he's not so stupid that he can't see that there's something going on there. And then there's Montaigne, Luc Montaigne who won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the AIDS virus, who replicated Ben Venice's work. Jacques Ben Venice, the head of INSERM, the, the French director, that showed that these homeopathic remedies have biochemical action. That Randy, James Randy, had to jump in on and, and supposedly debunk, you know, by screwing up the test. He, and there's evidence he did that. I mean, it's like this stuff is so palpable. It's so patent. It's so obvious what's going on here. But they just don't want that answer. So they come, they'll do anything. Cheat and lie to make up the other one. You've got to get out ahead of this stuff, ladies and gentlemen, my friends. Get out ahead of it and surf the wave. Check into the depth. Check into the depth of these things. If somebody says something like climate change, Ask them, well, what percentage of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide and what percentage of that is man-made? Just ask that question. They'll get red-faced red pissed because they don't have the answer to it. The same thing is going on in politics. I mean, wipe the slate clean. and Come at this from a new perspective. Get out ahead of it. Get out and lead the band. This, the elements of socialism are inevitable. People have to be have to have a socialistic structure of government, or you could call it something else, to survive as a, as a nation. People are terrified right now, and it's capitalism that's terrifying them. This idea that you have to go out and compete, you have to make it big. You know, you got to be somebody, be somebody, do something. You know, don't don't enjoy your life. Go and make it miserable by trying to do something. You know, make yourself a star. Make yourself somebody. Be somebody. It's like, shut the fuck up. Just lay, lay off. A man, give a man his labor. Give him something to do that's worthwhile. And he'll do it and he'll be happy with it. So anyway, that's my diatribe. I don't know how long I've been doing this. Half an hour. I'm at the 34-minute mark. Well, good. I hope you enjoyed it. My name again is John Beneth, and uh, if you're watching this on the Bandershot channel, I pose, put it up with links sometimes or some text at the John Beneth Journal at WordPress, johnbeneth.wordpress.com. I put in some uh, links, but uh, I don't know. Anyway, did I ever say what happened with the, when I called into the radio show? They basically just hung up on me. So, 
where's where's the um, liberal versus conservative? And they uh, they hung up on it. They can't take it. They can't take it anymore. For two weeks, get it get out ahead of it. Lead the lead the way the way it's going.